Hey boys, welcome back to another Ray Billy Live 4 video, and this one's going to be a bit different, it's not going to be one of the series, as the title will suggest, it's going to be a tips and tricks type video, and I, I didn't really think I'd have to do this type of video for a Ray Billy game, because, you know, they've always been, they take a little get a, getting used to the controls and the way it plays, but... This game, this game is hard. It, it's not just learning the controls and getting used to it that's hard. Like, I've played, like, a lot of hours now, and I still find it hard. But, and for, you know, just so everyone knows, I'm not claiming I'm amazing at this game or I'm the best or anything like that. But I have spent a fair bit of time, and I am getting used to the game. And there's a few things I'm going to talk about that will really help new people or people that are still struggling with it, because obviously, I'm not going to talk about the release debacle, but obviously, a lot of people do have the game, but unfortunately for people that are waiting for the Australian release, it's coming out like 28th still, so it's very, very weird, but, you know, I think it's a pretty good time to actually make a video like this, because, you know, people that are getting into, I think this will help you guys out a lot. Um, so the first thing I will say, the first thing I will say is the kicking is a big one, right? The kicking is very, very difficult to get used to. And I I didn't understand the kicking to start with. I mean, I understood the kicking, but there's a little um, aspect of it that you don't really, you wouldn't really know about unless you you just happen to see it or you 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 know, someone else told you, and that is being able to charge up the kick before you actually take possession, so, I, even like the first few games I played, I was constantly complaining about, they need to nerf how quick the AI can get off the line and tackle you, because you just couldn't get a kick away, like, I was, I was getting tackled every single time before I could kick the ball, but what you have to do is, it's the same controls for kicking, um, the indication for where the ball is going to land is a, is is different, and it's actually a lot harder to actually kick where you want to. I found, but um, the the same control. So pretty much my method is, well, well, first off, if you wait for your player to catch, like what you would think would happen, you call for the pass on last tackle, or whatever, your player catches the ball, and then you line up the kick. Do not, if you do that, you will get extremely frustrated because you'll constantly get tackled. You'll lose the ball. And it's not a good time. It's not a good time. I was getting super frustrated with it. But my little tactic now is you don't want to do it too early. Um, but generally, I do it. Call for the ball as a playmaker. And then pretty much as soon as a dummy half throws the pass, I'll hold L2 and then whatever kick it is. Either the punt, which is X. It's the same controls as regularly Live 3 for the kick. So, But I just I, I charge it up and I hold it down before the ball gets to me. So... That is that is probably the one of the biggest tips I'll give you guys because the kicking was extremely frustrating, um, and and it is a little bit different because this time there is like a bar underneath your player, but that is for accuracy. So when you hold down the X button, it charges up the accuracy. That's not the power meter. The power meter is the circle that you move with the left analog stick. So you can you can kick it away a bit earlier with um with reduced uh what's it called, accuracy, but with this little tactic of doing it early, you can generally uh, get a good kick away, um, that's what I found anyway, uh, another big one, I'm, I'm going through a couple of the little annoyances people are saying about the game, so the next one is players being offside, now I've seen this a few times, and I've, I've come across this a few times, with like markers and players just being offside, it's another one that I was getting very frustrated with, but the one thing I think just happens is that occasionally you have to just accept that occasionally your markers are going to be offside and I, I think it's I think the game does this on purpose because the AI is occasionally like that as well and you can take advantage and it happens to you now it looks a little strange because you know the play the balls are fairly slow so you're like why why are my markers offside but I think it's just the game is making dummy half running a little bit more you know viable so Occasionally the markers will just be offside. There's nothing you can really do about that. But the other one that was annoying me, and I've, I've seen other people talk about, is if you're controlling a player, he'll just stand there and he'll be offside. And it's very different. Like, 
it is it is quite annoying like I don't know I don't know why they, they really did like this because in previous games if you're controlling a player and you went up like let's say you went up to make a tackle and you you didn't have to get involved if you were still on that play and you didn't touch him he would just go back into the defensive line or he would go to marker wherever wherever he would go but in this game if you're controlling the player you have full control like the the AI will not get involved you literally have to move the player back into position otherwise he'll just stand there and uh, it can be fr quite frustrating because you know you're trying to focus on the other defensive line um, and that sort of stuff but you got this player just standing offside um, so my general rule with that you know you can manually just move him back into the line but generally I'll just like switch players to um you know just someone out of the way someone already on side just so the AI gets them back to where they're supposed to go I find that the best method so you know with the offside like I said you've got to expect occasionally your mark is going to be offside and also if you got a player selected either manually you'll have to move them back to the line or just select another player and they'll go back themselves so that's another annoyance that I've seen people talk about now there's two aspects of the game, obviously, right? There's defense and there's attack. Now, defense, I think I've got pretty pretty well sorted. Now, <laughs> I was struggling like most people with the defense. And the main thing is the switching of players. Now, I, it's just, it's just about getting used to it, really, because it is a lot different. Instead of, like, hitting L2 um, to switch the closest player, you've actually got to use the, the left and right bumpers, which... Um, or are they the triggers? I don't know. It's L1 and R1. I don't know. I don't know which way they are, but you got to hit those ones. And it, it might not seem awkward, but when you actually play it, it's extremely awkward. And there's another big mechanic in the game, which is, and the reason why they had to change it is because of the controlled tackle, which is very, very vital if you want to defend well in this game. So you hold the L2 button, and that's sort of like, it slows the movement of your player. It compresses the defenders around him and also gives you like the ability to just strafe back and forth as I almost knocked my <laughs> shaker over but it just gives the it, you can strafe back and forth it makes it very easy to to tackle and you can you can cover you know the AI sort of zigzagging it's it's a very good tactic now it, it's still tricky but the the method I come up with and I really like this method because it's not like it's it's simple like oh you know you just tackle everyone it's very easy you actually have to really think about defense still like I find myself during a game getting lazy and going back to old habits of staying at marker trying to run out of the line um, because you know I'm just getting getting lazy with it but if you do that the AI will punish you so what I do is after the tackle is made I always switch to like one or two players off the ruck either side I, I try to pick what side the AI is going to attack it doesn't always happen but I try to pick the side they're going to attack just so I've already got the player selected um, and you can you can get a good grasp of where the AI is going to attack they generally go to the open side they do occasionally attack the blind side but rule of thumb is they go to the open side and also if you see like the sort of like set play lined up then pretty safe bet that they're going to attack there so switch to a player one or two off the ruck and then as soon as the ball is passed, if, you know, if they attack that side, I've already got the man on. I just hold left uh, L2 down straight away. It, uh, it slows it down, it compresses the defense, and then I just strafe back and forth. Pretty simple. If they pass to the other side of the field, I quickly press R1. Not too quickly, because then you'll just switch to the markers, but when they get a little bit of distance, hit the R1 button, switch the player directly in front of the attacker hold L2, strafe back and forth, and and make the tackle. It's it, it's just about getting used to that sort of combination. It's just the com like it's a simple combination. It's just R1 to the closest player, hold L2, and just uh, make the tackle. And obviously the AI throws a few passes, so you've got to you got to be ready if they do another pass from that. You got to hit L1, uh, R1 again. You can use L1, but I just find R1 is better because. L2 was on the other side of the controller, so you can sort of hit L1 and L2 at the same time. Uh, I just find it easier anyway. So that's that's my little tactic there. I'll uh, I'll have some like gameplay of defense and showing it in action. Like if you haven't played the game, it's probably not going to make too much sense. But after a few games, you'll you'll get the idea. Now, that's that's pretty much defense. 
Um, I guess another big one also that's very, very tricky to defend. Now, that's the front line defense. And like I said, I feel like I've got defense pretty pretty well sorted. Like, I feel like I'm pretty good defense now. Um, but the one really tricky area, and I still I haven't mastered it yet. It's just hard to do. And that is when a player makes a, a break into the backfield. Because if you're on the fullback, it's really hard to stop the AI because they... They swerve in and out, and the movement from your plays is nowhere near as responsive as Rugby League Live 3. You cannot turn turn on a dime in this game. So if they wrong foot you, they're pretty much gone. So what I generally try to do with that is sort of sort of hold off. I don't I don't make the decision with the fullback to race up and try to shut it down because they'll just cut inside of you and score. I generally try to hold off a little bit, wait to see if the the frontline AI defenders can come back and stop him. And if I'm needed, you know, just sort of hurt him to a side or something like that. Don't don't rush up and try to stop the play. That's that's pretty much all I can say about the fullback um, positioning. It, it is tricky, yeah, but... And sometimes you do get a little bit excited and trying to rush up with the fullback to put a hit on. It doesn't, it doesn't usually end up well. Um, so that's defense. The other big aspect, obviously, is attack. Now, attack... Attack, oh, I think I'm finally starting to get a little bit proficient with it, but boy oh boy, playing on the like veteran and obviously legend, it's really, really hard to score points. Now, the biggest tip I'll give you straight away is use your forwards. The game, and people have wanted this for ages, and I think Big N have done an excellent job with making the forwards very viable. It's not that they're very viable, they're actually a must in the game. Because if you try to just spread it to your wingers or if you try to just use like your good halves just to run through the line and uh, use pace, you will get destroyed on the high difficulties. The The forwards will put shots on the, the little guys, they'll drop the ball and it'll be very frustrating. So use your forwards, roll up the middle of the field. That's the biggest tip I'll give you. Um, use the driving mechanic, which is the R... Uh, the right end log stick, as soon as you make contact with the defender, hits up on the right end log stick and, you know, if you can, drive forward in the tackle. Gives you, like, a good extra few meters. Um, and it's actually, like, pretty... It's it's very important, actually. Um, so that's, that's the biggest tip. Use your forwards. And, yeah, like I said at the start, um, it play, plays completely different to Rugby League Live 3. So pretty much everything you learn from that game just forget about it because if you try to play the same as that game you'll get destroyed honestly because some of the you know some of the more tactics from that game I guess was hot potato footy offloading um, long balls out to your wingers and stuff it doesn't work in this game especially the hot potato and the offloads because if you and this has called me out a few times, and I'm, I'm still not sure if I really like this or not, but the game punishes you for taking the ball right to the line. Now, I'm sort of a bit like, I don't really like that. Like, I would I would rather, like, being able to take the ball to the line. Like, that's, 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 that's how good halves are meant to play. But in this game, you do have to pass earlier than what you would expect, because if you take the ball to the line, in most cases, the AI defense will tackle you just before you can make the pass or if you do get the pass away the person that catches the ball will get destroyed as well they'll get hit and uh knock the ball on now i do feel like the big hits are slightly overpowered and i think they might get nerfed i i sort of i do hope they get nerfed because it does make that play closer to the line just sort of impossible because if you get the pass away the AI on high difficulties just puts a hit on more often than not, and you'll drop the ball. So play early, um, use your forwards, and, uh, you know, offloading is is fairly risky. I mean, it, 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 it says in the, you know, the instructions, offload early, and that that seems like a must. If, you, if you're in the tackle animation and you think about offloading, you give it a second, don't offload because if you take a second longer and then offload the ball like nine times out of ten it goes forward um so you know if you got a bit of room and you're ready for the tackle and you offload it straight away 
generally they go backwards and you you know you can play on from that but yeah if you if you delay a little bit if you hesitate just just hold the ball just take the tackle the the game is heavily uh incentivized to play field position so other tips i guess is kick early you know use it use your um use your forwards to roll up the roll up the field a bit and then kick early kick early is a is a big one because you know the big hits are slightly overpowered but they're also sort of overpowered for you as well because if you kick early you get the ai um in their zone then you know you can get out of the line and put a big hit on obviously use the tips i said in defense but uh there is a strategy to if you can read the play coming out of the line and putting a hit on trying to turn the uh turn the ball over but uh yeah it, it's obviously a risk at the same time but uh other things with attack the other thing i found the step the step is really powerful in this game now i'm i'm happy about that because if the step wasn't as good as it is i don't think i would ever like get any line breaks dude it's crazy um you know you use the step with your outside backs it's it's very very important and the one thing i've really found is working at the moment is when you do spread it wide um step before the line because if you step and beat that first like generally the way i do it and i'll try to put up if i can get some footage of this if i'm spreading the ball wide let's say my second rower has a ball i'll sort of like step just before the line and if he and like pass at the same time because if he steps beats the first player the second player will come in for the tackle you get the pass away just before he gets there and it gives you a center and winger like room to move pretty pretty regularly as well and it it is it is a pretty effective strategy i'm starting to employ is just getting it out to the second rowers like when i'm attacking like um step just before the line and throw the pass fairly fairly well straight after you don't want to leave it too late like i was saying because you'll cop a big hit but if you step pass the ball usually you'll create a bit of an overlap and uh yeah that, that's probably the the biggest one i've found so far um but uh again i'll stress play uh play smart footy mainly attack when you're in the opposition half because if you turn the ball over in your zone it is very difficult to defend your goal line against the ai it's it's near on impossible i mean you can't do it but occasionally there's just times where they'll just score like there's not much you can really do so that's uh that's, that's pretty much the tips i've got for you guys um you know I, I find the attack is definitely the hardest part of the game for me at the moment i think defense when you when you get used to it and use the tips it is like it's rewarding it's not like easy like it's definitely not easy the defense you got to keep focus on it um but the defense if you do those those things it, it does work pretty well but the attack you know it's just it's just about playing smart you can't you can't hot potato it um and it does make it difficult like if you're trailing and you got to score points you know there's not really too much you can do you just gotta be patient um and occasionally it's just not gonna work you you kind of lose games um that's just what's gonna happen it's not like rugby league live three you you're not gonna win every game you kind of lose matches and i guess the other thing is probably for people that haven't played the game yet start off on an easy difficulty i mean you can go to like the highest difficulty if you want and just have a just get smashed in your first match i mean that's sort of what i did but um you know probably start off on like the second easy even like the even fucking amateur is actually like fairly difficult you'll probably lose on amateur when you first play but you know start off on the first or second easiest difficulty just get the controls because the controls are fairly different the movement is a lot different and uh you know practice your practice the running lines and what works and what doesn't but uh yeah hopefully you guys got something out of this pretty long video but um yeah i just thought it might might help out some people that may be struggling or you know the guys that haven't quite played the game yet some good tips to to go into it but yeah it's 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 a good challenge i'm uh i am thoroughly enjoying a challenging rugby league game but yeah other than that hopefully you guys enjoyed make sure to like if you didn't i'll see you guys in the next one